Well, the 80s are having a moment at the movies over the next two weeks. Here to review at Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, and Tetris is film critic Chuck Kaplinski. All right, we starting with the dragon one? Let's start with the dragon. <laughs> Name, you know? No, yeah, we can't be bothered with you know four or five words. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. There we go. I said it. Um, is coming out uh, tomorrow, and I got to tell you, I know nothing, nothing about Dungeons and Dragons as far as the game is concerned. I do know there was a crappy uh, previous film version that didn't really excite me at all. But I got to tell you, I can't remember the last time I had as much fun with a movie as I had with this one. And there you see Chris Pine. He plays a guy named Edgen, and this guy's a fast talker. He can talk his way about out of anything. And his daughter has been left with a character named um, Forge, played by Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant's in charge of his own little country right now, and he has uh, really manipulated the daughter against the uh, against Edgen. So Edgen decides to get the old band back together in order to go and rescue her. Well, as you can see, there is plenty of action in this movie and you know that's nothing really new but what is good about this film is the humor there is just a lot of really good laughs here primarily because of the chemistry between all the people there you see Michelle Rodriguez as Holga she is a warrior with a heart of gold you're also going to see Justin Smith there as Simon he is a conjurer a sorcerer who has really low self-esteem and when you have really self low self-esteem and you're a sorcerer apparently it really affects your uh, the way you conjure up things. Uh, there you also saw um, Doric, a shapeshifter uh, who really comes in handy. This movie really reminded me of the very first Star Wars film as far as the adventure is concerned, but again, also as far as the chemistry between the characters. You know, when you, you can tell when actors and actresses are having fun. You can tell when they're having a good time, and that translates off the screen. That means that we have a good time as well, and you can tell that everyone just got along. You can tell everyone had a, a great uh, experience with this, and it really was much more fun than I thought it would be. I think this is going to be a mega hit. I saw it at a sneak preview uh, two Sundays ago. Every seat was sold. Wow. It was sold out. So uh, I'm hoping this one does well because they're obviously setting up a franchise, uh, and with everyone involved... I'd be willing to go on another adventure with them. So this one wow. was really fun. Okay. Well, I'm wondering if you feel the same way about Tetris. Love that game back in the day. I bet there is so much you don't know about that game. Oh, for sure. I agree. Because there was so much I didn't know about that game until I watched this movie. This is absolutely fascinating. So Tetris apparently was invented by a guy in Russia. Oh, didn't know that. Didn't know that either. And you're going to see Taron Egerton here. There he is as Hank Rogers. He is also a game creator, but his games suck. Uh, <laughs> but he sees Tetris at an electronic show, and he suddenly realizes, wow, this is something. This is truly, truly unique. And he ends up pursuing the licensing rights so that he can produce this film on his own in China, which is where his company is based. Well, he gets the rights to do this, sells them to Nintendo, but then he's told... Oh, by the way, there was another deal already. You don't really have the rights to this. Well, he does what any entrepreneur would do, and also anyone who has mortgaged his house and his entire future on this venture. <laughs> he goes to Russia to track down the inventor to see just who owns what. This ends up playing out like a Cold War spy film because you have other people there who are trying to get the rights to this game. People are making deals. People are double-crossing each other. This guy's uh, life is in danger because he doesn't understand Russian culture. This all takes place during the end of the Cold War. I know that I make this sound very complicated, but it's not. All over a game? All over a game. Wow. All over a game. But it's more than just that because they do talk about the many millions that this thing has made. This is a fascinating film. It wow. is on Apple TV starting tomorrow. Sounds like we got two winners. Two winners. Uh, I'm it's wondering been a good though, week. but will tomorrow Murder Mystery 2 be as good? Uh, I'm going to put my vote in as probably not. <laughs> well, you know, you're not always right. Let's just say that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about Murder Mystery 2 tomorrow on the morning show. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that. And sounds like we got some great choices for your viewing pleasure this weekend. Definitely connect with Chuck and Pam, whether that be their Facebook website or YouTube channel. And um, we will look forward to seeing you next week.